Today is another travel day. We're heading out of Kanab to Zion, which is a little over an hour. First stop is Kanab's Little Hollywood Museum. A jail and a saloon? I don't know how that works. here was the final scene out of the outlaw Josie Wells. He's an army of one. Clint Eastwood is the outlaw Josie Wales. Now that's where he's headed. When they had a major gunfight, and I remember the scene because the family was fighting out of this thing, and these are the gun forts they used to shoot out of when they're getting attacked in the last scene. Inside, it's got uh, you know what it looked like on the inside. And somehow they transported this structure out here, uh, but uh, yeah, outlaw Josie Wells, you, you a bounty mean, hunter? Man's got, got to, to do something for a living. living. I ain't ain't much of a living boy. James Gardner, Jody Foster, Disney comedy, One Little Indian. These are original cowboy boots out of a movie. Yeah, a little worn. <laughs> They've been weather worn. <laughs> the attic door. What movie is this? Josie Wells again. It just mantled the barn. The barn from Josie Wells, man. Oh, and look here. Here we have Boot Hill. <laughs> One, oh, yeah. <laughs> two, three. Better than that? a doornail. Rest in peace. Amen. Remember her? Oh, I remember her. From uh, the Monsters. Yeah. Look at this. Shopper singing too loud in church. Boot Hill. She was hot. She's in jail, and then she was put to rest. That's right. <laughs> Just reverse the order. <laughs> Our second stop is at the Kanab Sand Caves. We're making a couple of stops along the way. This stop is Mokai Caverns, also known as Sand Dunes. I have no idea what to expect. There's a dirt path when you park and face the cliffs. It's off to the left. It is the parking area near the animal sanctuary. So it is a sandy path. They do have signs. It is further than I thought it would be from the parking lot. But if you look, there are caves up here. And that is where we're gonna head. Now to figure out how to get up there. Lots of different footpaths. Just get up this first scramble and go across. Head back towards the caves that we saw from the trail. You can see the caves across the way. We made it. There's Ingrid right down there. They're man made. It's 
the way you come up. Come all the way over and then down the cliff. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. And pretty neat. Interesting thing in there. There's a fair amount of graffiti here, which is the first time we've really seen that. Then we signs posted asking you to uh, refrain from adding more graffiti. But it's uh, it's pretty cool. Oh, Vito's back and here. Vito back in the very back. What is this called? Sand Cave. Moki Caverns. Moki Caverns. It's like a uh, nice little hideout. No sand on your hands. Pollyanna's admiring the sand quality up here. <laughs> <laughs> I am because if I had kids, this is what I wasn't playing in. <laughs> this is the view from the edge of the last open cave. You can see the trail down there. But I don't want to go falling. All right, we're going to head back. Just to give you a feel for how far it is from the parking area and a little bit of walking around up here, it was about 0.7. So it'll be 1.4 up and back. Me. <laughs> and I'm not sure which way Vito's going. Although, it might be the smart way. Slider would be proud. Let's see how she does on this thing. Pollyanna made it down. Congratulations. In one you, piece. Oh, watch out, buddy. I am. You got to be sure footed like a bighorn sheep on this thing. This is a bighorn sheep scramble. The caves we just went to are definitely man-made and they were put in there for mining sand. It's a big sandbox for the little kids who followed us. <laughs> <laughs> so was it worth going up? Absolutely and it was fun. I mean you know just barely over a half mile. I think it was 0.7 and uh and lots of fun. And by the way it was a scramble. <laughs> just well okay I admit it. <laughs> We made a stop at the Belly of the Dragon. It is a man-made culvert area. It's uh, interesting, we'll walk through it, but it's made to drain the water from the Upper Canyon to the North Fork River. about 150 feet to get through the man-made culvert here. It should open up at the end. Oh, it gets dark in here. My eyes have to adjust. Oh, that was tough on the eyes there. Footing on the uneven. This is the end. You can see there's quite a few people here. Oh, they're going into the belly of the dragon. Oh, light at the end of the tunnel. Now that's the beginning. Well, the beginning. You recommend flashlights, buddy? I would recommend having some sort of light. The floor is very uneven, and it's hard to see, especially with the sun, the way the light's coming in here. I agree. But it was a great walk. Yes. Yeah. And it took, what, three minutes to walk all the way through the belly. I think it's 150 feet.
making our way into Zion. We got a big buffalo herd here. And we're just outside of Zion National Park. All right, our second to last national park in Utah, Zion National Park. This is where you pay to get into the Zion National Park. It's just right past the sign. The historic tunnel is the Carmel Tunnel. We're at the checkerboard Mesa Overlook. Might find bighorn sheep on these at some point. 15 miles an hour. Made it through the Mount Carmel tunnel. That was a long tunnel. We were going to do Observation Point Overlook, which is a one mile out and back, but the parking was, oh, there really wasn't any, and there was no place to stop. So we were forced to go through the tunnel. So we missed that today. These openings in the rock are part of Mount Carmel's tunnel. I expect tons of people. <laughs> it is 1.40 in the afternoon. We are trying to stop at the visitor center and this parking lot is full. And it's a huge parking lot. There's cars everywhere. Cars. Yay. We are heading to the visitor center. <laughs> We've made a tentative plan for tomorrow. We are going to try to do the Narrows and we are getting our dry suits set up for tomorrow. The way this equipment is going to work, bibs are going to pull on over what you guys are wearing. Rubber gaskets on the bottom here go on bare skin, about okay. two inches above the ankle bone. Okay. Neoprene sock over the gasket. Velcro cover comes down over top of the shoe and you'll be barefoot in the socks we're giving you. A couple things to keep in mind. Boots and socks are not waterproof. Your feet will be cold and wet the entire time on this hike. The neoprene is going to keep them relatively warm compared to the temperature of the water. The water is about 45 degrees though, so that relative is only going to get so warm, it's not going to feel very warm on your skin, but it will be warmer than the water. And we do expect the water to be deeper and faster tomorrow than it is today, so there is a solid chance you guys get knocked into the water. Okay. Just keep that in mind and become comfortable with that idea. How okay. deep? How deep? Today it's about here on me. Right at the very beginning is this deep. After that, it's about thigh deep on average on me. I'm 5'10". Tomorrow, since it is starting to warm up, the snow melt's going to start to pick up again. I don't know exactly where it's going to be. Today was 81 CFS this morning. Tomorrow is going to be somewhere between 90 to 100 is my best guess. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Vito, what do you think? Question is, how, how cold are the feet going to get? And how long can we take it? That is going to be the big question of the day. And how deep is this thing going to get? Because you're 5'9", I'm 5'11". I'm 5'4". Five 5'4", four. Five four, so... Pollyanna, gonna Pollyanna's going to get wet. <laughs> we are finally heading into the park where we're going to stay at the lodge. of electric bikes. I actually have a uh, beer on tap. They don't want out here in a cabin. This is what the cabin rooms look like here at the lodge in Zion. We really enjoy the propane heater. There's a sink area with a microwave and a refrigerator below in the normal restroom.